back to my channel. I am Isha. For those of you who are new to my channel, I am currently living in Darwin and pursuing my masters in teaching from Charles Darwin University. And to be very honest, I've been getting lots and lots of questions with regards to Darwin. You know, you keep on asking me on my Instagram and on my YouTube. So to help you out, I have taken the screenshots of all the questions that you keep on asking me, and I will be answering all those questions in this video. This is going to be the part one, and I will keep this series in continuation. This series will be all about Darwin, so you can ask me all your questions, whatever you want to know with respect to Darwin or any other place in Australia. Just in case, if I'll be able to help you out, I will do that for you. Thank you so much. And before starting today's video, I just want to request you that please subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comment section what else you want to know with respect to Australia or. Especially Darwin. Thank you. All right. So the first question that I've got is, Darwin is good for international students in regards to jobs and good lifestyle, or Adelaide is better than Darwin. Okay. So to be very honest, let's let's consider consider the number of factors over here. So someone is asking me, especially for, with respect to international students, jobs. So talking about the jobs here, I have seen that the students who directly come from India, I have seen them struggling because I've been teaching IELTS and PT, and I have uh, you know I have a couple of students, and they tell me that they are not able to find a job mm -hmm. because they didn't have any experience. And uh, there was one girl who found a job in uh, McDonald's after three or four weeks after living in Darwin. But then if you have experience, for example, if you're moving from any other state, let's say Sydney or Melbourne or whatever, then it will become more easier for you. And it, the only tip for this is even if you're in in India and you're coming here so just keep on working uh, you know work on your skills and the better skills you will have the better work you'll be able to get so there's nothing to be demotivated uh, but it's just that you have to struggle a bit and ultimately you'll be able to find a job and sometimes it's hard to find a job in uh, wet season but in dry season there are like lots and lots of job opportunities because that's a tourist season so it will be easier for you if you're coming in uh, dry season that that is going to be easy all right and then talking about the lifestyle over here to be very honest if you're moving from big cities like sydney or melbourne there is going to be a drastic change you will feel that you were in some big metropolitan city or in something like that and all of a sudden there, there is a huge transformation and you move to some village or a very small place to be very honest and it, like for example i moved from india and uh, like i was living in chandigarh back in india so when i moved here i felt the same I, I I didn't experience any change or like you know any big transformation or any big lifestyle change. It was like almost same. Like if I'm living here, I think that I'm living in India only. So you know the basic housing and stuff. Of course, there are some things which are gonna be different. Of course, that's Australia, but no major difference to be very honest. It's like almost similar. Of course, the you have to work, you have to earn, you have to go to uni. In India, we don't uh, do those things usually. You know because. So half of the things are done by our parents to be honest but ev everything is to be done uh, by ourselves over here and then talking about the second question here which says Adelaide is better or down okay I will give this answer very honestly I have been to Adelaide a couple of times and I'm, again not a couple of times I've been to Adelaide once and now again I'm going to Adelaide when I went to Adelaide for the very first time I really loved the weather over there the vibe over there the weather over there was awesome and if I compare it to here and if I have to choose between one, I'm going to choose Adelaide to be very honest just because of the weather. The weather over here sucks. It is so hot here, you are always sweating. Even if my aircon is on, I am sweating. This is something which I really don't like about Darwin. But then of course, it, it Darwin offers you other opportunities which I'm going to discuss in my other videos uh, and in my other questions as well. So just don't rely on this one answer. It, it's completely up to you. It's your decision what you want to do. Please do your own research before moving to any city. Don't rely on my answers. I would just simply say that. Okay, so my next uh, question is Are there any jobs in the university campus? Okay, so when I came to Darwin over here, I was also looking for some jobs, especially in the university campus, because I knew that if I'm going to find a job outside, it is going to be hot here. Therefore, everyone prefers a job which is under roof. So I still remember that I applied for casual library work I applied for that in which you are in the library like the Charles Darwin University library campus over there you have to work in what sense I'll tell you maybe you know reshelving the books keeping the space tidy and then sitting at the desk so all these kinds of work so I think that's like a contract of six months or so basically one semester but you have to apply for that beforehand and then they choose and then they give you shifts so that's something which i know is available in the university especially for the students and i have a couple of friends who actually work over there so this could be one of the options if you're planning to work in the campus 
ओके पेरेंट्स क्या मिलता है जॉब से ओके सो नाउ टॉकिंग फॉर द पेरेंट्स सी इट डिपेंड्स इन इट डिपेंड्स दैट इन व्हिच फील्ड यू आर ओके फॉर एग्जांपल आई हैव फ्रेंड्स हु आर वर्किंग इन हु आर डूइंग सम रिटेल यू नो रिटेल वर्क और कस्टमर सर्विस दैट गिव्स यू If you're a full-time worker there, that is going to give you somewhere around twenty-six dollars per hour, and if you are a casual, that is going to give you more than thirty dollars per hour. Talking about my other friend who's in Medi, so she gets twenty-six dollars if she's working during the daytime, and if she's doing night shift, then she'll get twenty-nine dollars per hour. And then talking about my friends who are in the driving thing, so they get thirty-five dollars per hour. Some of them are getting thirty-two dollars per hour. So it again depends. Some of my friends who are in teaching, you know, they're doing teaching assistant jobs. So the basic over there is like thirty-five dollars per hour. So it keeps on fluctuating from twenty-five to thirty-five and something like that. And of course, if you're into age care and other things, so that might get increased. Okay, talking about the next question. Okay, I have one more concern. What about the part-time job scenario in Darwin these days? Is it hard to find a job for international students? I'm going to Darwin in February, and and is Darwin a safe place in general? Okay, talking about Darwin again. I will mention that Darwin is having two seasons: wet season and dry season. In dry season, there are a lot of job opportunities because it's the fresh season here. All the tourists are gonna come. Of course, if there are tourists, there will be more jobs. They require more labor. And in wet season, which is going on right now, it's little bit harder to find jobs because there are no tourists here and there's less work. But again, if you have a will, you can find the work. But also, to be very honest, I have seen students struggling over here. You know, I have seen students do. Doing uh, what we say those food delivery jobs, but that's that's okay. That's okay. That's not a big thing. That's okay to just start with your living and pay for your rents and stuff. Uh, I I just saw a student doing uh, that food delivery job on a bicycle. So it's all about the struggle. Eventually, you are going to find a job, no matter wherever you go. But it is gonna. It might take some time. Is Darwin a safe place in general? Okay, now it depends. That it depends. If you in daytime it is safe, but usually it's not that it's that safe during the night time. Uh, and in general, I will say fifty fifty. I won't say that oh it's hundred percent safe. In fact, no no place in Australia is hundred percent safe. I have heard of crimes even in the big cities like Sydney or Melbourne or whatever. So it's not that uh, that the crimes only happen here or in Darwin or or in other regional areas. It's I will say that it's fifty fifty, but it's not hundred percent safe to be honest. Okay, so the next question is: Hello, are you doing study visa or work visa? So currently, I'm on a student visa that is sub plus 500. As I mentioned, that I'm pursuing my master's of teaching from Charles Darwin University, and my course will be finishing this year in August. But most probably, it is going to take more time, so I will get my visa extended. All right. So my next question is that: Can you please tell me how to find accommodation in Darwin? See, this is one of the most asked questions. My Instagram is actually flooded with this question that how you guys can find accommodation in Darwin. Uh, to be very honest, there are a couple of factors that you need to consider. The first factor is that if you're looking for something cheaper, then I'll suggest you two options. The first one is Uni Lodge, and the second one is IHT International House of Darwin. I'll put the links in the description box over here. Also, I've kept everything in written so that I can provide. You guidance in a much better way. For example, if you are looking for uni lodge, so uni lodge is basically for international students, and over there you get a four bedroom apartment that is for one nine one dollars per single person, two bedroom apartments for two hundred dollars per week, and studio apartment that is for two thirty seven dollars per week. So this is how it works. You can again check their website uh, just to check. And also, like I mentioned, International House of Darwin. And then, just in case if you are not, if you're not able to get this, uh, you're not able to get Uni Lodge and IHD. Then the other option is to go through Facebook. Now, what is what you can do over there is you can look for options. Uh, you can join Facebook groups. Which groups? Indians in Darwin. These are there are a couple of groups that you will find in Facebook that starts with Indian Indians in Darwin, Indian you know accommodations in Darwin, houses, rentals, or lease in Darwin. I'm going to put all the links in the description so that you guys. I can join whatever your requirement is. For example, if you're coming from first March, you can put that I'm looking for a room, uh, one bedroom apartment with uh, you know with washroom or with kitchen or whatever, whatever is your requirement. This is your budget. 
uh, and you want to start it, so you can put someone is going to reply you, or you just keep on ex keep on exploring and keep on checking the groups. That if you're able to find something over there, you can uh, you can ask people to you know help you out. Someone is going to reply you. Just in case nothing happens, if this also doesn't happen for you, like it didn't happen for me, I was because when I came, I came in the dry season, and in dry season it was flooded. There was no space here. Literally, there was no space, no rentals, nothing. So what I did was I had to book in hotel ultimately because I was having no space to live. So I think I booked in hotel for two days, and then within those two days, when I was here, and then I went, you know, and then I searched for a place for myself. I was looking for houses. I know it was a lot of stress for me, but then I didn't have any other option. I ultimately, ultimately, I had to come to Darwin. So this was one of the options. And the other thing is that directly you can also lease a house if you are coming with your family and if you want to have your own house, like if you want to lease it. So maybe you can check it on realestate.com, Gumtree. These are the options where you can actually check your accommodations. I'll tell you the basic price. For example, if you're looking for a room near city, like in CBD, so the single room is gonna be, I'm telling you the average, between $150 to $300. Then a one bedroom apartment is gonna be between $300 to $450. And near city, two bedroom apartments, it is gonna be around $400 to $600. So it depends uh, how things are. So these are the three options. The first option is Unilodge and IHD. The second option is to look for the Facebook groups and the third one is to go through the real estate agents to find house on uh, Gumtree. So these are the options that you can go through to find accommodation for yourself. And if you find nothing and you have to come, then you need to look for uh, you know holiday apartments. Basically, holiday apartments are also cheaper, maybe around seventy-five dollars uh, per day or something like that. That like I know that's not cheaper, but anyhow you have to. Okay, so I am coming. So the next question is, I am coming in February. I uh, am taking Darwin, and I and I don't know there anyone so how can I find accommodation I have already given the answer to this question okay hi Isha we are moving our family with kids to Darwin is there any area in the city that uh, that is safe because of, of course because safety issues okay okay now uh, first of all this is my honest opinion again earlier I used to think that CBD that is city is quite safe because I live in city and I I used to think that it's safe but a few days ago I just heard one of the incidents that was actually you know there's a person over here and I heard one of the incident that someone you know Breaked into their house and it was quite unsafe. I actually got goosebumps after listening to that scenario. So um, I also find that Nightcliff is safe. City is also safe, to be honest. Uh, but you never know what might happen. And some people prefer Palmston area as well. So if your work or your school is near Palmston, then that would also be something which is safer. And Stuart Park. Stuart Park is also a safe suburb. But it again depends. Please don't listen to me and don't say me that Isha suggested. And so that's why we did that. Please do your own research before finalizing anything. Okay, so the next question is. Can I pay my tuition fees $21,000 per year after doing part-time jobs in Darwin? How much vacation can I get from CD? Okay, so $21,000 per year, I think you'll be able to do that. If you'll be doing like two to three jobs and you're planning it strategically, like you're saving generous amount of money every week, you will be able to do it. Why I'm saying that? Right? Because practically, I pay like $14,000 for my four, four subjects, which is like I have to pay after four months or five months. So I have that much of time and I'm able to save that much. Uh, so if you have to save $21,000, it should be fair enough amount to actually save. And the next question that you've asked is that how much vacation can I get from CD? See, uh, so the semester over here is approximately a 4 months. So for example, my semester will now be starting on 6th of March and then March, April, May and June. And it is going to end in June and then my next semester will start approximately in like, so my next semester will be again of 4 months. And then I will be having a summer semester. So right now summer semester is going on. It starts like uh, Jan December, January and February and then we start in March with a new semester. So you can say that you will be getting constant breaks, nothing like that. So you study vigorously for four months and then break and then again four months and then you get a summer break. Which is like a fair enough and a generous time. 
Okay, so the next question is what is the fees for masters of teaching or masters in education program? So I'll talk about the fees over here of CDU because CDU is a little bit cheaper with respect to the other universities. So in CDU for masters of teaching, I have to pay fourteen thousand dollars for my approximately fourteen thousand dollars Australian dollars for my four subjects, which is approximately around eight lakhs and like Indian currency. And if I'll talk about uh, like in total I have to do 16 subjects so 4 into 4, 4 semesters, 16 subjects which approximately takes it to around 32 lakhs or 33 lakhs so you can take that an average budget of your studies is gonna be around 35 lakhs so that's how I calculate it and then of course extra expenses as well and I'm really not sure about Masters of Education. You have to check the website for that, but I'm pretty sure that it is going to be approximately like this. Okay, which place you live in in Darwin? So currently, I'm living in city, and I love to be here because it's it's comparatively lively. The roads are not that dead the way they are dead in other suburbs. After eight or nine p.m., they're like dead, which is not here usually on weekends. The city is quite live, so that's why I just love to be in city. Okay, uh, ma'am, me or my wife ne aana hai fees nikal jayegi ya nahi? Okay, let's let's be honest over here. If two people are and if one person is studying. I'm not saying dono log pad rahe hai, but if one person is studying out of you, both of you can work, you can do jobs and you'll be able to make enough money and you'll be able to, you know, survive and uh, pay your fees and expenses as well. But again, it depends on how much is your fees. If it's generous, then you will be able to. Uh, Ma'am, can we study one semester from Melbourne and move to regional and then we can get PR for 65 points or require 70 or 75 points? Okay. If you want to get the PR 5 points from your study in Darwin, like the regional area, then you have to be in Darwin for your throughout your complete course. You are not allowed to do one semester from any other state and then you move here. That's the rule. But again, you can talk to the university one, you can, you know, put in your email and then check. But uh, according to my knowledge, what I know is that 100% you need to be here in Darwin, you need to work in Darwin and then only you'll be able to fetch the 5 points of your study that comes from the regional area. And then can we get PR for 65 points or require 70 or 75 points? Again, this question is very dicey and tricky. Uh, I am not going to say that okay you will get PR on 65 points. I have seen people here who get PR on 65 points and I have seen people here who get PR on 65 points but they are waiting from past two years to get their nomination. So it really depends. The more points you have the better your life will be because you have to wait less. So again and again I will be giving more uh, you know reviews and more of my opinion on this topic once I will get my permanent residency. If I will get my permanent residency in 65 points then only I will be able to like I will be sure enough to say this. So unless or until I see someone getting it I won't be saying that okay yes in Darwin you may get it on 65 points. Okay I saw the video and it looks so hard to survive there in Darwin. Do you still have the advantage to get PR more easier and quicker than other cities? Okay so yes life is a little bit hard here because of the weather and there are a couple of other factors as well that I keep on talking in my other videos but still if you are looking for something which is quiet you know calm you don't have to travel much you don't have to get stuck in traffic the way it happens in Sydney or Melbourne then this place is literally for you if you want to be close to nature then this place is for you I'm sure you're gonna like it and you still have the advantage okay so when I talk about the PR over here you see uh, Australia has already eased out a lot of food uh, it, I use. I still remember people used to say that you can't get PR. You have to wait for eight years or nine years in Australia if you want PR, if you want your permanent residency. But talking about these days, talking about the scenario nowadays, since Australia is lacking skilled people, they really require migrants. They really require uh, people who are in skilled occupations. So uh, it's not that if you'll be in Darwin, then only you'll be able to fetch your PR. But the other cities and other states are also giving you PR uh, on less points and. They've also eased out their rules. Uh, for example, Adelaide. That's that's again a good place. And so it really depends on what factors you want. And talking about quick, quick over here is it depends on which course you have chosen. If you have chosen the wrong course that doesn't lead to PR, then Darwin can't again Darwin can't help much in that case also. So you need to be smart enough to decide that in which course you need to enroll so that you'll be able to fetch your PR easily. Okay, so that's it for today's video. All these were the questions. I've tried to answer a lot of questions. Uh, 
again I would mean, mention please do your own research before moving to Darwin check for everything don't rely on my facts because uh, I don't want <coughs> like people should say that teacher said that's why I just, we just came here please find your own job please find accommodation before coming to Darwin I hope that you really like the content of this video let me know in the comment section whatever what else you want to ask me with respect to Darwin or CDU I feel free to ask me and I will be happy to answer your queries thank you so much for watching this video please give it a big thumbs up if you if you found any of the answer helpful and I'm going to see you soon in my next video thank you